Good evening, everybody. I'm hoping that this setup works. I'm set up a little bit differently on a different webcam with a different microphone on a different computer. Uh, and Craig is at Memphis Kitty Park. So hopefully this all goes well. Um, and of course, my phone decides to... Mark, Amber, answer your mom. My wife decides to call from on the road. My daughter's over here playing with the dog. Uh, it's going to be an interesting live stream. Uh, I am definitely doing things much more informal tonight. Uh, so that's why you got the little bit different arrangement. Uh, working on showing the pins and the brochures and answering questions. And I actually got some other stuff to coming up as well. So we're going to see if we can't have a little bit of fun and make this all work right. We'll see. All right, so if you hear some weird noises, my dog is over here playing with her <gasps> with her chicken toy. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, my dog is going to be censoring me. Isn't that great? Uh, so a couple things, like I said, going to give you kind of the opportunity to see some of the collection, let you all direct me as to what you want me to show you and where I go and what I pull out. Uh, so one of the first questions that I typically get that somebody has already mentioned is the boat. What is the story behind the boat? Uh, so my stepfather is actually the one who built this. Uh, all handmade, uh, balsa wood and others. He painted everything, did everything in it. So he is the one who built it. Uh, it is designed actually to have a motor in it as well. So you could take it on the water, but it does not have a motor. Uh, he passed away a few years ago. He and when really it came- at woodworking. Yep. Uh, so you hear my daughter chiming in too uh, but when he passed on there were some things that he's got five sons of his own and they didn't uh they passed on this i'm like why would you pass on this so i got this uh which i'm actually very happy about because there were a few things i wanted that was one of the big ones so uh that is where the boat comes from and it's why it gets a prominent place so that is kind of left uh for my stepfather and that's why it's there uh, so let me kind of explain a little bit as to what you're looking at and where things are. Uh, this is a stack of different brochures and maps and other things that need to be filed. Uh, many of these I actually don't have a file for yet. So that's why it is kind of sitting there waiting for me to get to work. Uh, I got a couple other things, including my uh, time traveler opening shirt uh, from when I was there for the media day. And a couple other things I have not put away there yet. Uh, and of course, I got my Hank's Black Cherry Soda. Yes. Um, so these files, uh, all three file cabinets are basically all from different theme parks and amusement parks. There's maps, brochures, uh, flyers, mailers, uh, souvenir books that are in here that didn't go on my shelf, and various other things like that. The shelf over here these top three shelves are all pins uh most of them disney pins but there are definitely pins from other places and then the bottom two shelves which you can see a little bit here this is all my uh, theme park books disney souvenir books disney dictionaries there's roller coaster magazines uh, all sorts of stuff down there uh, i've got posters i haven't been able to put up yet uh, i've got the carousel up there which was a gift my pennants from when i was a kid are right there and I do hope to kind of get some of those put up eventually so that kind of gives you an idea of where everything is as far as the collections um, I do have more magnets and the shelves over there which I'm still adding some things to the shelves but most of my stuff is actually out now or at least out of boxes and kind of someplace where it's like hey put me away uh, so that's kind of where it is the magnets, of course, you can see I've got a lot of them. Uh, they actually, most of them are from places I visited, but there's a number or two that have been sent in uh, by viewers. Uh, the brochures and maps, there's a lot of those that have been sent in. I purchased some online, uh, but a lot of them I've also picked up along the way. But I love when people send them to me because uh, it fills it in. <laughs> so here's a fun story for you before I dig in. Um, my son and I were talking... <laughs> as the chicken 
censors me. Uh, my son and I actually had talked about what to do with all this stuff when I go. He was thinking, well, you know, well, it's not worth all that much. And I started showing him how much some of these things sell for online. And uh, he was a little shocked that some of my Disney maps, even from when I worked at the park, are selling for $10 each. And then I've got like 10 of that particular map and stuff. And he was like, whoa. Okay, so I see uh, Six Flags St. Louis maps. Let's see. Six Flags. So the first half of this, let's see, that's Silver Dollar City. Let me get the right drawer. There we go. Six Flags starts here and goes back. So Six Flags St. Louis. Do, do, do. Let's see. Fiesta, Texas, New England. And is it, it is the red folder here. So this is all Six Flags St. Louis stuff. Um, and just to kind of give you an idea, this is the kind of stuff I keep. I have photo tags. Let's see if I can get those up there where you can see them in the light. There we go. I've got old season passes from, from the days when they used to have the cards. And then for the maps, and this isn't anywhere near all of them, and I'll try and show these off. I've got, let's see here. Do, do, do. 2002. Uh, so that was actually the very first time I visited Six Flags St. Louis. Um, no, wait. 2002 was before that. So that's one that somebody sent me. Then we have 2004. This is actually... Let's see here. Try to get this where you can see it. There we go. That's the first time I visited Six Flags St. Louis. I've also got our parking permit from that very first time. There is 2014, several of those, and then this is what gets me, the all-new Boomerang. Ooh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we have a 2017 park map. I actually don't have one from the last couple years because various things have kept me from going. But, uh, so let's pull out 2004, and I've got other brochures and stuff here too this is actually a stapled booklet and so you can see it's got everything kind of lined up rides games attractions on different pages and then when you finally get to the map the map does actually fold out and that is what let's see if we can get there you go so there's your map from 2004 and I'll let you see kind of what it looks like so Let's see here. Brian's asking, which which one did I send you? Um, I do not remember which one it was that you sent, Brian. Um, because when I file them in, I don't attach a note that always tells me who sent what. So um, Now, I do have more recent ones. So after those, Six Flags then started doing this for the maps. Much bigger fold-out things. So this is what they do now. And I do have a few of those let's see does it say what year it doesn't say what year but there is some more fold out ones so bigger maps different style than what they used to do uh let's see here try and get that put back okay and yeah, I'm going to be a little bit more informal here, so I'll be a little slow. Uh, Parker, any maps and stuff from defunct parks? I uh, wonder if there's any that survived. I do have a number of different ones from defunct parks. Uh, it would be easier to um, look them up uh, as far as specifically by park. I don't have a folder for defunct parks. Uh, but uh, that's So if you can think about that, um, do I have any rare pins? I do, actually. I've got a number of them. Um, and I see Josh, you're also asking about Dollywood. Let's see. Rare pins. I've got a number of different things. <laughs> Thanks, dog. <laughs> My dog loves her rubber chickens. By the way, the Walmart box up there and then this box right here, these are loose pins that I need. Uh, they don't fit into my binders real well so let me see if i can show some of these to you these are cast pins 
I'm trying to think. You know what? I have shown those several times. Let me pull a different folder. Um, let me do this. This is my holidays and attractions folder. So let me try and show you some of these and how well, see how well these will come up. Hopefully the camera will show them well. But these are all basically from different holidays that I worked. And see if I can get the angle here where it will show them. I may have to pull them off the page. Let me, let me pull them out of the folder here. Because we got several pages here. And a lot of these are rare pins. There we go. That's a little bit better. Uh, so these top ones right here, these are older pins that I actually got from a friend of mine when they passed away. So those are hard to find now. There you go. That's a little bit better. And then these down here, I actually got when I worked at Walt Disney World and they sold them to the cast members as leftovers. Hey, we got these pins we don't know what to do with. So, uh, as far as other rare pins in here, um, you know what, I was, I just got one the other day, which is a newer one. Let's see if I can find it here. Might actually be in my box. Um, I've got pins that you could only get if you took on tours and stuff. So let's see. This is all traders. Um, okay. So let me try pulling this box out. So this is a new but fairly rare pin, and that is the Magic Key. And I actually got that trading. And then... There's a couple others in here that are also rarer. If I can pull them out. Do, 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 do. Um, this is one that I was given. It's the Fairy Tale Wishes. This is actually the fireworks cruise that they used to do. And they would give you this little booklet, and there is the pin that you could only get if you did the fireworks cruise. And I never got to do the fireworks cruise, but I had somebody bless me with that. Um, and then there's a couple others in here. So there, there are definitely a number of rare pins that I have been given over the years. So I hope that gives you a little idea. Uh, let's see, so I see the Dollywood maps. <laughs> If I get any more pins, you'll need a real TARDIS to sort them. Uh, so I am right around 900 pins if I include my wife's pins in the collection. Uh, and that sounds like a huge number. I actually know some people that have 8, 9, and 10,000 pins, which is crazy. So, yeah, it's, it's nuts. Um, let's see here. Um... <laughs> How about that crappy Merlin show your kid was a part of? Oh my goodness. Okay, so 2004, when we were cruising across the country, uh, we were moving from California to Florida. And I actually flew my kids to Springfield, Missouri to meet my grandmother, my grandmother, to meet their grandmother, my mother. And uh, so they stayed in Springfield for the first half while I drove across the desert without much there. And we made stops at amusement parks all along the way. And uh, so cliffs and... Uh, Castle and Coaster in Phoenix and Wonderland in Amarillo and got to Springfield, went to Silver Dollar City and then we went to Six Flags St. Louis It's the next stop with the kids and they had a terrible magic show. Horrible. <laughs> the poor guy doing Merlin hated his role. They were having to get kids up on stage to do parts and they were begging the kids please come up we can't do the show without you and the kids were bored um poor joseph was sitting on stage next to this talking tree and he's just like <laughs> it was bad it was bad so uh let's see amber mr six flag says hi 
Drew, the Minis let's see, the Minnesota parks. Uh, which ones? I'm trying to remember what parks are up in Minnesota. So, um, Amber, what's your favorite Six Flags park? Um, uh, what was that one that was really pretty with all the trees and the good painting and music? Uh, Texas? Yeah. Six Flags, Texas. There you go. So. Because all the other Six Flags don't have theming. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Is your sci-fi stuff in the room you're in now? Yes. Yep, for the most part. Um, let's see here. Do I have any Six Flags maps with Looney Tunes characters on? Most of them have it. So, um, Parker, anything from Giaga Lake or parts of it? That's a good one. Um, let me see. Okay, so there's the Dollywood. Let me show you the Dollywood real quick because that was asked for as well. There's my Dollywood folder. So you can get an idea of how much stuff I have from Dollywood in here. And um, let's see. So, I mean, here, this will take you back a bit. How about Dollywood Kids Fest 2004? That was the first time we got to go there back then. And let's see if I can do this. And yeah, nice. This is the brochure. I think I've got the map in here too. So this is actually the map from that year, 2004. Show schedule. And this thing folds out real nice. All sorts of park information. And when I tell you that Dollywood has grown, this is the whole entire park at that time. So 2004, you've got the Tennessee Tornado up here, and then you've got Thunderhead there. That's it. And the park has more than doubled in size since then. So they've gotten huge amounts of investment there. Uh, I'll try to pull this up so I can sit on my pillow. Trying to adjust this camera was interesting <laughs> to make it work. Uh, I've got tickets from our trip back in 2004 and then other brochures this one let's see what year is this this is 2015 uh so dollywood again and that's actually the brochure and then the map i think this is so we've got that one from 2019 so most of this is brochures splash country um, the week at Dollywood. So this is actually your park map. I believe. So you got the, their first initial pumpkin, what we now call pumpkins in the city, Great Pumpkin Illuminites, which is probably one of the best events that they have come up with. March 16th, let's see, the Festival of Nations. I wish Silver Dollar City still did something like this and there is your map for that uh, let's see here try to get so it doesn't reflect on the light there you go and you can see how much that park has grown they filled in that whole loop and done so much more with it uh, oh and then i've got this judy put this together for me so i've i've got that which is a great souvenir book and uh, a few other things as well and then if you want the most modern map, okay, here, crazy stuff I've got. Stuff from their owls that they have there, uh, the eagles that they have. I've got, what is this? We've got another map here. This is from 2017. And again, you can see how much that park has grown and filled in. and Yeah. Meanwhile, Silver Dollar City is still about the same size. <laughs> you can tell where the company has put their money. So, Giaga Lake. Um, let's see here. Disney. Doo -doo. Trying to remember, here we go. 
Okay, so my Giaga Lake folder. I've actually got a few things here. Some of them are from when it was Six Flags. A lot of it is. So you've got the Six Flags Worlds of Adventure premium book. Ooh. Um, and then the park map. So this, again, folds out. And you can see, if I can actually unfold it here. There we go. That is what was Six Flags Worlds of Adventure. So Geauga Lake there. SeaWorld portion there. And I actually got two visits there. One where they closed the gates on me as I tried to get in. And then got to visit again the next year. So this is 2002 that we've got. And then I've actually got a couple things that they mailed me here. Uh, let's see here. From Jaga Lake and uh, Splashwater Kingdom. And so we've got one of the old brochures that they sent me at the time. And so you can kind of see a little bit of what Giaga Lake was promoting at the time. I was on their mailing list, and so they would send me a brochure every year. So, written to Dear Valued Guest. Ooh, I feel so special. <laughs> yeah, this is when I was living in Florida, and... Uh, I think, let's see, 2017, that would have been after Cedar Fair had taken it over. So, would I be interested in an auction brochure from the now defunct park that I worked at? Absolutely. Yes. Yes, very much. I love, love all these things. And, and there's such a history of a lot of these parks that are no longer around. So, yes, very much so. Uh, let's see here. and see what else we have do i have any cedar point maps or brochures no i hate cedar point <laughs> yes hang on <laughs> uh let's see here okay i'm here to get that into the right spot i think cedar points are here by the way i should clarify for those few people who have not heard the story, Cedar Point just has the misfortune of being the place that I had the worst experience at. Um, but I do really like the park. Their customer service just leaves a lot to be desired. So this is all Cedar Point stuff. And again, you can see I've got just a little bit there. Um, I'm trying to rest this here. So stuff like this will take you back a little bit. How about Castaway Bay? There we go. That was their old water park. Um, we've got 2001. This is my first trip. This is the one that got washed out. But I do still have the original map that shows everything I didn't get to do that year when they said, yes, everything's open, and none of it was open. Mean Squeak, I mean Streak is there and you can kind of see all the way down you said streak yeah mean squeak i mean streak i thought you were saying main street no the coaster was named mean mean streak but uh it was slow and painful um and it made lots of noise and so we called it mean squeak and then there's 2002 that we have let's see try to get this down here so the like will work there we go and i've got two this is the actual map brochure i've also got a 2005 brochure there is the cedar point getaway guide ooh, from 2003 and a 2004 version um, let's see i've got souvenir booklets I have my fun picks card. Um, <laughs> okay, so this is fun. This is actually some of my notes from my very first trip there and what I thought about some of the coasters. Uh, 2017 park guide. Um, got their spooky fun weekends. 
28 team park guides. Um, oh, and then this is actually one of the things I really like that Cedar Point does. I've got three of these. Ooh, Amber's handing me cookies. That's mean, child. Um, so I've also got the 150 years. And if you're looking at this wondering what it is, I'm not going to eat a cookie right now when I want this. She's putting chocolate chip cookies on my map. M&M. M okay. So what these are, this thing actually unfolds and really unfolds. I'm trying to do this very carefully. And it is a giant map of the poster size map of the park, which is really cool. Um, and all goes well. I am hoping to add a 2023 version of it. So there, y'all are getting an early announcement that 2023 is on the plan for Cedar Point. Uh, let's see, Six Flags over Texas. Okay, and Justin's, which Six Flags Texas? So Six Flags over Texas is the original Six Flags. Six Flags Fiesta Texas is different. Um, I don't think I've ever been to Fiesta. No, you haven't. Let me see. I gotta get this back into place. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Canada's Wonderland, Carolyn's. Cancel, you go ahead. There we go. Okay. Uh, let's see. That's Walt Disney World. Six Flags. So, what we have here we have Six Flags over Texas and Six Flags Fiesta Texas. So over Texas, I should actually have some things that are older uh, because we were in Texas for several years. So here, this will be fun for you. My 1996 Six Flags Over Texas season pass. <laughs> so that'll take you back a little bit. Um, I've got four of the brochures from 2017. I have a, let's see, a couple more uh, when they added the Joker and the show guide. The funny thing is we were there way back in 95 and 96, and yet I don't have any of my brochures. And I know my angle with me here is kind of weird. It's just so I can stand up in the camera and uh, work out. So it's a little weird. And let's see, Six Flags Holiday in the Park, which now they're not doing... Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. 2019 Fright Fest and Park Map. And then we've also got a 2020 Park Map. And then the one thing I do have from way back. So this is Six Flags Over Texas, a Time Warner company. So that'll give you an idea of just how far back this thing goes. Let's see if I can do this and not make a mess. So this is another one of those poster maps. And it does have a slight tear in it. That's the one thing I have from when we lived in Texas. Uh, was I do have one poster map. So, And these are the kinds of things I would love to get frames for. And put them in frames, but I don't have quite that much wall space. So, Six Flags Fiesta Texas. There is 2015, the brochure. I've got the 25th anniversary. I have Wonder Woman's opening. Holiday in the Park, sponsored by H-E-B. Howard Edward Butt. If you ever wondered what H-E-B stands for, that's what it stands for. Uh, because that was the guy who originally opened it up. And I know that because I worked at H-E-B Grocery for over a year. Um, let's see here. We've got the opening of Daredevil Dive and, and several of those. Um, so this is actually from the one time I got to visit. Was the Fright Fest map. And I avoided all the scare zones with this. <laughs> And then we've got one more here. I've also got a couple of these that I grabbed on my way out, and that's the big folding map. So there you go. 
Uh, let's see. Drew, Valley Fair, and Camp Snoopy. Okay. So I do have both of those. Let's see. Valley Fair. Um, you got to remember where stuff is. Let's see. Need to, actually, Valley Fair may be back here. To you. I don't have a lot from Valley Fair. Okay. <clears throat> Valley Fair is pretty thin. But what I do have, let's see, I've got a 2004 brochure and, um, okay, so here, this is fun. 2004. See if we can get this up there. There is their prices to go to Valley Fair in 2004. <laughs> Yeah, that was a long time ago. Uh, let's see. The Fun Guy from 2005. I have a 2019 uh, guide with the map in it. And then I have one poster, which folds out. And that's the Valley Fair one. Not as big a poster as some of the others, uh, but there you go. So not a whole lot from Valley Fair, but a little bit. And then the Nickelodeon Universe, most of that, most of the Nickelodeon Universe uh, from all of America I got when I was there. So I think I showed that off in, yeah, in my uh, haul video from that. Let's see here. Did I get any pins from Israel? Uh, Israel doesn't really do the pins. They don't really have any parks there. There's a couple small ones and they were closed when I was there. And um, I really didn't pick up any souvenir pins there. So I did get a couple magnets, which are around somewhere, uh, but not really any pins. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Mike, what the cluck is the dog doing? Here, Amber, give me the chicken. The, my, my dog's trying to get this again. So if you're hearing this thing... This is what she is attacking. <laughs> and, uh, yes, she's looking at me very mad right now. You just took my toy. There. Pop. Okay. Give her her chicken back. <laughs> yeah, Veggie Tales uh, ages you a bit. I, I was actually singing uh, the Larry song this morning. Oh, where is my hairbrush? <laughs> okay. Um... Let's see, would it be funny to put on maps you are here? I've actually had people, okay, true story. People at Disney, when they were there, wanted to know why the park maps didn't show where they were. I wish I was making that up. What's wrong with these maps? I can't tell where I am on here. It doesn't say you are here. Yep. <laughs> Ah, uh, there are some people. So, oh, I'm so sorry. COVID sucks. Uh, COVID really sucks. Disneyland. Let's see here. Um, okay, so let me. I'll look up the Disneyland ones. Richard, uh, of the maps you have of parks you haven't visited, which would be the first on your list to go to? Probably Carowinds. Um, I would love to go to Carowinds. So, excuse me, cat. Let's see. Um, so Carowinds is right there. Not a whole lot of Carowinds stuff. Um, I do have the 2017 Carowinds park map. I really, I was really hoping and expecting to get to Carowinds this last year and it just didn't happen. Uh, and then I've got that brochure from when it was Paramount's Carowinds. That'll go back a little bit. Um, no, that that may be my big disappointment this year, is that I didn't get over there. And I really was hoping to. Disneyland. <laughs> okay, Carolyn, you opened up a can of worms. I just want to let you know. My Disneyland folder the plural okay let me just do, 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 train okay i don't know how well you can see this 
this section here is Disneyland. So let me try to pull some of this out. And I will just give you a little idea. That's one of two folders <laughs> for Disneyland. And I got to be careful because there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, so I actually have a lanyard from the very first time we took the kids to Disneyland. Uh, we booked with the Walt Disney Travel Company. They got a few pins. Uh, Mom and I, all we got was those lousy lanyards. <laughs> but I have the lanyards from their first trip. I've got, I have coupon books in here that you can't get anymore. Uh, so those are in here. I've got, how about an old Disneyland guide from 1974? Um, let me see if I can open this and not make a mess. So 1974 Disneyland. It's a little booklet, and each page in the booklet has a land and what's in it. And so when you walked around the park, it wasn't one big map. It was little sections in there. And that's how they did this for years. So about the closest you got to a whole park map was that. Right in the middle. <laughs> so I have... Let's see here. Um, the old boulder stuff. I'm trying to keep this limited here. We've got my third trip to Disneyland, 1985. I have my grad trip to Disneyland, 1988, including my uh, the grad night actual uh concert schedule and, and other stuff and then let's see this is 2001 this was that great trip that we had so um yeah i've got and then all sorts of other stuff 2003 uh 2004 right before we moved and then a number of others so this is all park maps and booklets and brochures and a number of those mm -hmm. but then we've also got things in here Let's see if we can do this without making too much of a mess i've got let's see this will bring back some memories for some people imagine six dollar parking at disneyland <laughs> yeah when was that um i have a picture somebody sent me with chip and dale uh, how about the uh, concierge pass at the Hollywood Tower Hotel from California Adventure? Uh, this dates back quite a ways. I can't remember what year this is. I want to say that's 1980s. The Electrical Parade. Um, let's see, what else have we got in here? I've got Festival of the Holidays stuff. And Okay, try to pick this up again without dumping it. Come here. Don't dump. Okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's a lot of stuff in here. Let's see. Okay, so here's fun. So, again, from our very first trip with the kids, I've actually got the hotel booklet inside this thing. Besides the map, we've got old fast passes from that trip and uh yeah crazy stuff actually that was the second trip we took them on uh oogie boogie bash candy cane bash and a lot of newer stuff in here too but that's that's some of the more fascinating things we've got um this is actually the package that you got when you booked that was from our i think this is our first trip oh here we go Okay, let me set this stuff aside so it doesn't spill like it's threatening to. And then let me show you this, because this is kind of neat. Okay. So again, going way back. 
Yeah, this is from our very first trip. So when we booked it in June of 2001, um, if you want to know how much we paid, hotel for two nights. Wow, we actually, we see longer than that. Uh, let's see, three days for the kids, keepsakes, ESPN zone card, fast passes. Um, oh, here we go. And then we got two more nights. So all told, you'll love this price. This actually details the whole thing. And let's see if we can get that where it'll show you the total clearly. And here we go. $500. Can you imagine going to Disneyland now for 500 bucks for several nights? We were there for four days. No, five days, I believe. Um, had a whole schedule printed up, early admissions, and uh, we've got our tickets still here. So, let's see. So there is our original Disneyland Resort tickets that we still have. <laughs> it's, yeah. Magic Feature Voucher. Magic Morning Breakfast, Walk and Walk. Wow. Why did we not use this? We could have gone on the Magic Morning Breakfast or the Walk and Waltz Footsteps Tour or the Welcome to Disneyland Tour. I wonder why we didn't use that. And we have four of them. They're still there. I ought to call Disneyland and say, hey, you owe me a tour. I wonder if that would work. Probably not. Um, luggage tag. And then we've actually got a California fun book. That was all part of the package at the time. So, yeah, I, I keep crazy stuff. <laughs> all right. Set that aside here. So I can remember to put it away later. Uh, let's see. Craig, you're past the side of Geauga Lake in five minutes. Must mean you're almost home. So. Wow, getting lots of comments here. Yeah, Wish Park still had mailing lists. Yeah, I do too. I, I liked getting the stuff in the mail from the parks. So. Um... Mike, Far Rockaway Queens used to be a park called Playland. I don't have anything from Playland. I do wish I did, but... Um, does Amber remember the time on X... He's asking about X2, but do you remember your ride on X? Mm -hmm. When I got in trouble? It was fun. So... And Jennifer! Hey, Jennifer! Good to see you! Nice to have you on board. Uh, Cedar Point is up in Sandusky, Ohio, right on the Great Lakes. It's actually a peninsula that sticks out into the lake. It is really, really cool. Uh, it, it's for roller coaster enthusiasts. It's actually the park to go to. It's called the Roller Coast, uh, right up there. It's a neat park. It really is. But happy to have you on. It's been fun watching your videos again too. So, if you guys don't remember Jennifer Oaks, uh, she and I did a collab a long time ago. She worked at Walt Disney World uh, as friends of the princesses and some of the other characters. She's got some great stuff. She's doing a lot of stuff about her kids and other things now too but uh, go check her channel out so it's let's see heading to williamsburg soon williamsburg um let's see let's see if i can okay that's all that whole drawer is walt disney world <laughs> but williamsburg is let's see if we can find it here Let's see, the Wild Adventures. Okay. So, Williamsburg from our trip. Uh, if you like history, Williamsburg is going to be amazing for you. It is, it's a little on the expensive side to walk around and see all the buildings, but it is absolutely amazing and cool. Especially if you can get there on a day that they're doing the fife and drum and all of that. Be sure to get your maps. Uh, and it is a lot of walking, but it is just so cool. Uh, they've got whole maps as just the dining and shopping because there's all sorts of it. And let me see if I can show you this one. This is when we got to go in 2005. So it is Williamsburg this week. And this will give you an idea of how much there is. 
Um, we could have easily spent two days there. Let's see if I can get this up where it will show it. That is all the map of all the different locations that you can go to in Williamsburg. And then the back side of this is all the descriptions and uh, costs and times and schedules. And it's just, there's a huge amount of stuff. Uh, they've got different passes, so this will tell you which ones are covered on which pass and which you get to go see. Um, and you might think, oh, history, boring. Uh, our kids weren't bored when we went there. It was 2004, so you would have been nine at the time. I don't know, Amber, do you remember Williamsburg? Where was Williamsburg? Colonial Williamsburg in Virginia. They got the Young Patriots menu. It was the old historical village that we walked around for a day when we went to visit Aunt Liz and Uncle TC one time. I don't remember a whole lot about the visit to Aunt Liz. Okay. Uh, let's see. But, yes, Williamsburg is really cool. Uh, definitely look your prices. Uh, buy stuff online. Uh, that would really be good. Really be cool. Uh, which theme parks have you visited the most? Probably Magic Mountain, I think, because I lived right near there for a long time. Um, so, and I'm going to jump in because I'm like 20 minutes behind the comments. So, I will go back and look at the chat logs later. So, uh, so if I miss something, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get caught up here because uh, there's a lot there. Uh, let's see. What's the coolest Donald Duck pin I own? Uh, so let me pull out my Donald Duck pins. Do, 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 do. Donald. So this is Figment and Donald and Chip and Dale. And that's all that's in this. Um, so let's see. Full page of Figment. So let's see. That is almost all Figment. Let's see if I can do this. So my Donald pins... I got a page that's Chippendales and Donald's. So those are all Donald. Let's see if we can get them up there where you can see them a little more clearly. It's kind of hard doing this on the webcam because the webcam doesn't like to focus real well. Um, that's most of my individual ones. I do have a few others. Um... Here's a couple of them. This is Figments and Donald's. So you can kind of get a little... Let's see here. It's a little better. Trying to get it to focus in there. But uh, the one I like is right here next to my Figment pin. If I can get it to focus, there we go. It's Swab the Deck. And try to get that lined up with the camera. And my lighting is just not cooperating at the moment. There you go. That's a little better. So, I like that one. And I'm sorry about the lighting. Trying to get the lighting in here to work is terrible. <laughs> My daughter will tell you, I was down here for over an hour trying to get stuff set up. Meanwhile, she was upstairs listening to me going, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> I heard at one point you going, da, 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 da. Yep. Uh, let's see. Have you been to Walt's room at the top of the firehouse? No, I have not. Never have. Wish, wish I was, but so. Uh, let's see. Oh, what a gift to have that map. It's not the same online. No, it's not the same online. I, I really don't like the move that a lot of parks are going to, that they're getting rid of the paper maps and they're going with the online things only. It's like, ah. So, I uh, hope your kids aren't bored. Uh, honestly, I doubt they will be. They do stuff like they let the kids muster as part of the militia um, and take part in the drum parade. There's a lot of things for the kids. So they really should be able to keep keep active. We were there on kind of a rainy, semi-miserable day, so some of that stuff they didn't get to do. But they still had fun, um, even if my daughter doesn't remember it. So uh, Let's see. Don't forget Bush Gardens. It all, it's a great park, just education can work kids. The neat thing, Bush Gardens, I think, honestly, may be like the perfect balance of a park between the zoo, the education, and then the thrill rides. They've just, it, 
I love the Bush Gardens parks. Um, and yeah, since you're going to be in Williamsburg, don't forget to head over because you're not that far from Bush Gardens, Williamsburg. And it is absolutely amazing. If you can fit it into your price, uh, to your budget and everything, definitely, definitely do it. Um, and then Great Wolf Lodge. Oh, my goodness. Great Wolf was cool. I got to finally see it the one in Anaheim. That was awesome. So, do I have any books about different theme parks? Okay, so it's a little hard to see, Josh. But there are two shelves down here. That's all they are is books. And then there's several here, too. Uh, it's not just Disney. Let's see here. And I've got them all kind of organized alphabetically. Um, let me see what I can pull out here that will work. Uh, so we've got... Um, if I can get them out here. As I'm crawling on the floor. Okay, there's Kennywood. There is Knobles. Uh, that is also on the plan to go back to this next year. There is Knott's Berry Farm. But some of you may get a kick out of this. I've got one here for the Mall of America. And then, uh, let's see here. Silver Dollar City, of course. What else have we got? And then um, I've got a number of just kind of generic roller coaster books. Let's see if we can pull these out. <sighs> so these are all different, just roller coasters. Uh, the American Amusement Park. So these are coffee table books. Uh, white Knuckle Rides. This one uh, by Bob Coker, who was uh, the original guy who had rollercoaster.com years ago. And then this book here was kind of the standard roller coaster coffee table book for many years, even though it's got a few errors in it. But yep, got a few of those. Okay, let's see if we can get them back in here. The way they're supposed to go without making a mess. Ha! Huh. Whew. Those things are heavy. <laughs> so yes, I do have a, a number. I also have, um, if they're the paperback guide books, um, let me give you an example here. Um, I've got some that are actually in the folders. So, for example, SeaWorld has their books like this. And I will have those actually in the folders with uh, the park stuff. So if it is a paper-bound souvenir book, it'll be in the file. It's supposed on the shelf. So, uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Thanks, Jennifer. It, it was a lot of fun having you join us. I'm happy to see you again. we got to get together again at some point and swap stories. So it would be fun. I love the couple collabs that we got to do and would love to get to do it again at some point. So thank you so much for helping. Uh, let's see. Did I know that Warner Brothers has an indoor theme park? Bugs and Daffy Duck Eyes. Um, I have, um, which one are you talking about? They've, they have a number of uh, dark rides around at different places. Six Flags Over Texas just replaced theirs where... They were moving. Um, it could be Warner Brothers Spain. I believe there's also a Warner Brothers Park in China. I don't remember exactly where. So, Do I have any records and CDs of music from the parks? Uh, I actually do. Um, let me see. I'm trying to think where I might have it. I'm trying to remember if I put them on the shelves here or where I've got it. That's one thing I haven't organized yet. One second. Let me look over here. Over here. I wonder where did I put that music CD? Hmm. That's a good question, Carolyn. Uh, what are you looking for? 
my theme park music CDs. I've got, I have four. I've got uh, one from Disneyland Paris, two from Disneyland. Actually, one might be Disney World, one's Disneyland, uh, with the different area uh, music in it. And then I have one from Universal Islands of Adventure. So I've got four total. Uh, so not, I'm trying to remember where I've got those put. I don't know. Um, but I do, I do have four. And yes, I do collect those two, and those are cool. And I rip the music onto my computer so I don't lose, the, in case I do lose the CD. But yeah, I, I've got a couple of them there. So, whew, his books have me out of breath. Craig's <laughs> soundproofing is more important. I don't know any songs with that line in it. How am I supposed to sing to that? <laughs> but. Um, Actually, I definitely prefer the paper maps, especially in places with spotty connection. Yes, the Disney apps are atrocious for, hey, you get to the state the park's in and the app quits working. I hate that. <laughs> I will tell you, the Walt Disney World app for me works great here in Missouri. And as soon as I hit Florida, it quits working consistently. It's like, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I wish... Parks to go back to paper maps. I really, really do. So, um, do I ha keep any theme park VHS welcoming tapes? Yes. Um, let me see. Some of them are upstairs uh, with our TV stuff, but I believe are they in here? Do do do. It might be the next door down. Here we go. Let's see. How about... Celebrate the Future Hand in Hand, 2008 Walt Disney World. Uh, we've got Disney Parks Vacation Planner. And then I've got the Happiest Celebration on Earth Planning Kit. And I actually have the most recent magic key, which is a scannable thing. <laughs> so I've got, let's see. Um, and then I know upstairs I have two, two other VHS tapes. So, yep, I've got all sorts of stuff. Carolyn, let's see. What is a welcoming tape? So what these things are is... At the time, Disney would actually do a deal where you could write and say, hey, I'm thinking about a vacation. Can I get an information packet? And so they would send this to you, and it includes information about uh, how the, you could book your vacation with them, what offers, the packages, and then the videotape actually has footage from the rides and around the parks. It's basically a big, giant commercial that you, get to, that you ask for them to send you in your home. And it helps you plan your vacation, lets you know what's available, gives you an idea of some of the costs and how to book and where to book and what, what's there. So that's what those are. Um, and they actually still do that. Um, I think it's in the stack. Let me see. And, well, I'm going to knock this stack over if I'm not careful. Uh, nope, not that one. <laughs> See if we can find the right envelope here. Do, 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 do. And I don't see it offhand. Okay. Uh, if you actually go onto uh, Walt Disney World's website, look up, uh, I think it's the Disney Vacation Club right now. Uh, they actually have a package they will send you, and instead of the VHS tape or the DVD, it's actually got a little foam key with a QR code on it. And you can scan that and get the videos and, and information. Uh, and it's basically the new version of this. So, yeah, uh, crazy stuff. So, um, And there was actually one of those. It would have been... Uh, like the year that Expedition Everest came out, uh, the some of the commercial footage that they have on the tape as well as online, 
My son is actually in the second row on Expedition Everest for it. You can barely see the top of his head very briefly as it zooms by. But he is actually on one of these. <laughs> so it, it's kind of cool. Neat, neat thing that we got to do. So uh, good thing the mangots are not that strong. Yeah, they stick just on this. So uh, the inside of the case is actually nice and protected. So <laughs> uh, what is my favorite goofy moment? Probably my favorite one isn't necessarily a moment. Um, when the Spider-Man movie came out, Goofy really liked Spider-Man. And so there was a period of time he was trying to do Spider-Goof in Toontown. And he would just randomly run to the wall and splay out trying to stick. And they fall down, of course. And so we tried to do it again. <laughs> um, Goofy was always a lot of fun. Uh, he liked to chase the chipmunks around Toontown. Uh, he he just never knew what he was going to do. Uh, but, yeah, I had a lot of fun with Goof. But Spider Goof is probably the one memory that really jumps out right, right offhand and uh, says, yeah, memory of Goofy. So, but, uh, let's see. How many books are you short of opening your own library? Okay, so, here, let me give you... The room is a mess. It's a big mess, okay? Uh, partially because my daughter just got back from Japan. So we've got some of her stuff around. But here, I'll give you a quick pin of the basement. So you can see... Yeah, showing you her best side. But there is more books over there. There is more books over there. There's another bookshelf there. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're big readers. We read a lot. And uh, try, woo, don't knock it over. Stay. Okay. There we go. So, yeah, um, we got lots of books. Uh, so what you can actually see, just to kind of give you an idea, over here, if you remember, I'm a minister. Uh, this is mostly my Bibles and Bible research and um, information and stuff like that. Uh, and then I start with my history over here because I was a history major. I still love history. There's more history and biographies and stuff over there. That basically is almost, it's almost two shelves of history. And then we get um, Doctor Who, Star Trek, my science fiction. That takes up three shelves. And then we hit the uh, actual fiction, which is two full bookshelves. So uh, we've got something for everybody. If you like to read, you will find something here somewhere that you like. So, yeah, all sorts of stuff. <laughs> uh, let's see. Princess, Princess Willow's jacket looks like she was in Frozen. Yeah. Uh, so we got to see Frozen a couple weeks ago, a week ago. And uh, Amber Margaret got the jackets from a very generous patron. Hmm, wonder who that could have been. Uh, Margaret's actually on a... Uh, education retreat she's wearing that coat everywhere everywhere <laughs> she loves that coat so um yeah she she really does like it uh josh how much do i have of silver dollar city <sighs> um let's see here so silver dollar city so you can kind of see this it starts here no it starts there so this is my work stuff but yay hi and then the whole rest of the drawer is silver dollar city um, <laughs> so to give you an idea there is maps and brochures um this is uh various other things time travels Time Traveler's Opening Day Media Packet, other brochures and packets and signs and other things and buttons and ribbons. I have four folders full of the Pathfinder, which is um, their little newsletter. The newspaper tells you what's going on, where it is, uh, the maps of the park and stuff like that. And then I've got two folders full of employment stuff. <laughs> so... Um, and for my employment stuff, let's see here. 
Let me just, I'll pull out one just to kind of give you an idea. So I got two folders like that from when I worked there of relevant things. Um, so I'll be careful with, some of this is still under NDA, so I can only go like, okay, how do we get this? There we go, conductor spiel. That's your whole look at it. Um, I've got my welcoming packet here. I've got my son's welcome packet. Um, we've got operations procedures for the train. I've got paycheck stubs in here. Um, let's see, what else can I show you? Um, I actually have one of my garters uh, for my sleeves. So um, I have my letters from when I preached at the Wilderness Church. People ask, did you get to preach there? Yes, there is my proof. So <laughs> they would send those out to all the visiting ministers at the time. So yes, I have preached in the church there. Uh, we've got, let's see, more scripts. I've got my Christmas card from the leadership team there. Um, yes, they jib jabbed Christmas cards. So this is all of my managers. <laughs> uh, I have my uniform clearance forms in here. Let's see, more pay subs, which I need to get. Let's see, checkout sheets. There is my first year on the train was the 50th anniversary. So we all got to wear ribbons and hand those out pocket guides. Uh, this is actually one thing I'm really proud of. I've got my tin type from when I worked. Uh, most guys didn't get these. I kind of snuck it out. So, yep, I've got that. I've got other documents in here and all sorts of stuff, but yeah. Um, let's see. So Carolyn's last asking, how long are you under the NDA? Depends upon what it is. Uh, anything that is ever considered proprietary information that belongs to them that could benefit the competition if they know or that they don't want people to know about, I am technically not allowed to ever speak about it, but there does come a point when, okay, this is common knowledge. Uh, so a good example, the Utilidors of Walt Disney World were under NDA. You weren't allowed to even acknowledge they existed. Now everybody knows they exist. They even take people on tours. So yes, now you can talk about the Utilidors, even though for a long time they were under the NDA. Uh, so the safety procedures uh, and what to do in case of an emergency, generally we're not supposed to talk about that because one, they can change. And two, they don't want people to know what the routines and procedures are. So that way you don't have some little smart aleck jerk say, oh, that's how they're gonna deal with it. I'm going to cause an issue just so I can see it happen. Uh, because there are people that think it would be really cool to cause an emergency uh, and they don't want that. So that's part of the reason that uh, they don't want those kinds of things out. And then the uh, spiels, um, I probably could share that because people hear it all the time, but uh, they don't want people copying it. So little things like that. Do I think I have more or less Silver Dollar City stuff than Disney of like the maps? Oh, I've got far more Disney. Far more Disney. Okay. So of that drawer with Silver Dollar City, Silver Dollar City takes up two thirds of the drawer. Walt Disney World is this entire drawer. The whole entire thing. That's Disney World. Disneyland takes up probably a quarter of another drawer. And then there is also, I've got employment stuff for Disney World and then other parks. I probably have close to two drawers, a drawer and a half to two drawers worth of Disney stuff. Silver Dollar City has uh, two thirds of a drawer. So yeah, definitely lots more Disney. <laughs> so uh, let's see, Silver Dollar City, ever keep the shells after the blank was fired? No, 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 no. Uh, and that is for multiple reasons. Uh, shotgun shells after they've been fired are considered a safety hazard. So they don't want people playing with those. Get my pillow arranged so I can sit up a little higher. They didn't want kids asking for them because they would. And they didn't want anybody actually going um, and taking those kinds of things. They didn't want somebody lighting up the spare gunpowder because that could 
possibly happened. So no, uh, shotgun shells we disposed of after we used them, and that's how it worked. <laughs> is Silver Dollar City your favorite? <laughs> My favorite is whatever I'm in at the moment. I don't have favorites. I love them all. So no, I I honestly I don't know that I could pick a single favorite. Uh, and that's kind of my standard answer to favorites. Uh, let's see, how much so? Uh, well, here, there you go. I even have a banner made. <laughs> so, uh, let's see here. Just found in my collection prints for the Disneyland newspaper. Have it all the way up until 95. Ooh, how cool. Uh, do I have any of the newspaper Disneyland used to print? No, I do not. Um, I wish I did. I believe that's for the cast member there. I don't have any of the cast member newsletters for Disneyland. Uh, Disney World is another story. Um, let me see. They are here. So Disney World. Let's see if we can pull this out. Yeah, I'm here. Um, okay, if I pull that out that way, I'm going to make a mess. So... So let me try and pull it out this way. Uh, Disney World did something called the Main Street Diary. And uh, what it would put out was something called a walk in the park. And this was kind of their newsletter for employees. And in it would be uh, stories about cast members who did great things, opportunities and events for cast members, um, pins that were for sale, stuff like that. But a lot of it would actually be letters from um from guests about what cast members did for them and and then anything you need to know and so i actually collected a lot of them uh they it's all digital now they don't have the print version anymore which sucks but uh let's see here make sure you don't smash any of this do, 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 do. come here you there we go uh but no i don't have the disneyland ones that would, that would be amazing to have anything like that. Uh, do I have any update from the Silver Dollar State train accident? No. Uh, basically, at this point, I have heard bits and pieces. I've tried to make some guesswork, but in all honesty, nobody who knows anything is saying anything until the official report comes out. When the official reports come out, you will see it on the news. There's a lot of people that want to know. And until that comes out, um, I don't want to make a guess because I will probably be wrong. So uh, I, I don't even want to attempt to say anything. Um, when, when they know what happened and how, why it happened and how it happened and how to fix it, then we will know. Um, I've heard some guesses as to when the train might run again, but they're all over the place from Thanksgiving to next year to never. <laughs> And I have my suspicions about which is more accurate, but, uh, you know, as Justin says, the train conductors have been out interacting with guests. They are not letting the train crew go. They are still working. Um, the engineers are still working on stuff. So I know that uh, they're hoping to get it running soon. But uh, if you're waiting to go till the train is fixed, don't wait. We don't know when it's going to go. We kind of know what they hope for, but... Honestly, uh, they would love to have it running during Christmas. It may or may not. We just don't know. So, and, and when we do, it'll pop up then. Any news on the train of Walt Disney World won't be running. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine on that. Sorry, I need a drink. By the way, black cherry soda. So, but, um... Yeah, I have no idea on Disney's train. Um, Caroline, I'm guessing OSHA got involved. Uh, right now, uh, it is the state fire marshal that's leading the investigation. And that's kind of what we're seeing. This is a different realm than OSHA. OSHA is a workplace injury. And that's kind of... Um, so if an employee got hurt on the job, then OSHA steps in. This is a little bit bigger scale, so then it's the fire marshal. So, Ryan, I'm guessing next year, and that's that's all it is. I know, I know they don't want to wait till next year uh, if they don't have to. So we will see. And Ryan, thank you so much, Richter. I appreciate that. That is that's I'm I'm blessed 
So, yes, have a blessed day. Thank you. I, I definitely do. Uh, surprise, it's not the National Transportation Safety Board. Uh, because it's within a state amusement park or an amusement park, it's private property, a private rail line. It's not a public rail. Uh, that's why it's not the NTSB. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be the state authorities on that. People go, well, what about the fire marshal? He doesn't know anything about trains. You would be surprised. <laughs> so they do have experts that know train stuff working on it. I do know that. Uh, what's wrong with the train at Walt Disney World? It has been closed for Tron construction. Uh, that section, and when they started building Tron, it had to close the train because it was going to run right through it. They went ahead and they actually uh, closed the whole thing and they've been redoing the whole entire track. So soon, soon. <laughs> Uh, train or no train, it looks like an incredible park. It really is. It is an amazing park. Um, absolutely love the park, really do. So uh, that's why, you know, yes, favorites. Okay, there's the Disney parks, there's Silver Dollar City, there's uh, Cedar Point, there's a number that are great. Silver Dollar City is definitely up there, so is Dollywood. Uh, amazing parks. Do I think the new fire in the hole remodeled Silver Dollar City will be like Dollywood's fire in the hole? Okay, Dollywood's Blazing Fury is basically a copy of fire in the hole at Silver Dollar City. And it was done years ago. Silver Dollar City's new fire in the hole is bigger. Uh, it's a much bigger building. I know that. We don't know anything else. They haven't started doing track. Uh, it is um, basically the unofficial information I've heard not from Silver Dollar City, is that it is going to be delayed at least a year due to various delays. The track hasn't even started to put in, let alone anything else. So it's not going to be next year. It's going to be 24. And quite frankly, none of us have any idea what it's going to be like. We we don't know. Don't know. I, I wish we did. Uh, is Fireman Bill leading the investigation? Fire Marshal Bill. <laughs> Oh, uh, the man who doesn't want me to sing feeds lines like that. Really? So, um, saw a video clip where they just started testing the railroad. They have actually, in non-business hours, they have run the engines back and forth on the spurs. Um, they've gone backwards around the track just to get the engines out running and everything and check the lines. But, yeah, not... There's, I think they're supposed to be getting close. It's just making sure that construction isn't over the train. So... Um, I've been to Dollywood. Dollywood is amazing. They have the firefighter ride. Yes, that is Blazing Fury. Blazing Fury is, like I said, essentially it's a copy of Fire in the Hole. It's almost exactly the same ride. Uh, so, yep, that's what they're replacing at uh, Silver Dollar City because it's old. <laughs> it, it's end of life. Uh, it's 63, I think, 63 years old. Something like that. It, it's just, it's time and the talk about it is whether uh, what they're going to do where the old fire in the hole is. Uh, I would not be surprised to see them kind of start putting in a walking path to go around. There's some people who are saying that the train station is going to go there. I don't think that's going to happen for multiple reasons. Uh, traffic flow being a major issue. The land there isn't the smoothest. Uh, it'd be a cramped location. There's just a lot of issues with putting it there. Um, but we will see. The one, the one thing that would be nice with it is be much closer to the roundhouse, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I don't know what they're going to do with that land. So, um, <laughs> Tom, man, that's old. Glad that determines doesn't turn my end of life. Yeah, there's a difference between the human body and a ride. <laughs> so, I need to update the flooded mine. Yeah, I think that's going to be next on the list after fire in the hole. So. Uh, Jacob, just wa love the channel. Start watching. Thank you so much, Jacob. Welcome. Appreciate it. Um, but yeah, Silver Dollar City's future, I think after they do the uh, fire in the hole, I would not be surprised to see Flooded Mine have some major work uh, done or replaced or something. Um, and then we will see. There's a lot of people asking about all this land that they have bought. And, oh, they're going to put this in and that in. And uh, they're putting in parking lots. <laughs> Silver Dollar City owns a lot of land, and they have owned a lot of land, and it goes way back, uh, all the way down to the lakes and stuff. So, I don't think, I don't see any plans to put in resorts and stuff. We will see. Hi, right, George. Chilly November, only 26 degrees. 
Uh, yep, that's about what we got here. And they're actually saying snow tomorrow night? Yeah, tomorrow night. Uh, somewhere between a half to three inches of snow. So, uh, yeah, we got snow already. We got a light dusting yesterday morning. And I'm just barely out there. But it's kind of early for us to get anything at all. So... <laughs> Uh, but no, we're very excited about that. I like snow. I like the cold. So, um, Oh, I know what else I was going to show you. Pins. Do, do, do. I think it's these. Since we're talking about Silver Dollar City, let's see if I can hold these up. Okay, so this is pins from other parks, not non-Disney pins. And it, just so you can kind of get an idea. Dia. and come here you and yeah, then drop them all over the floor so silver dollar city i've actually got two pages of pins there we go 60th anniversary and uh, you can see several of the others there and then this is also silver dollar city pins i'm trying to get them up there where the light will let you see it clearly. Webcams sometimes are terrible for this kind of thing. Which is too bad. But you can kind of get a look at all the Silver Dollar City pins. Um, I actually had one point where uh, I had somebody was uh, selling... Oh goodness, it was like two to three hundred Silver Dollar City pins from going way back. Uh, it was a collection of somebody who'd worked at the park and they'd had them for years. Um, and this person was selling it on one of the uh, fan sites. I'm trying to get this in here again. And uh, and I was looking and going, that would be cool. That would be amazing. But there was also a guy on, oh, hey, look, somebody wants to get themselves banned. Do, 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 block. Goodbye. Um, but there was another guy on the site that collected historical stuff and I knew they would take much better care of the pins. So, uh, I told him, give it to him and he's been doing a great job. He's been sharing pictures and history stories with them and all sorts of stuff. So, uh, that was, that was really neat to see. But. <laughs> so. Yeah, I took care of the spammer as soon as I saw him. <laughs> uh, oh, 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 oh. Uh, yeah, Carolyn, go ahead and post that. Uh, there is an old, two old Disney training videos that I have seen on uh, on YouTube. They're legitimate, real training videos that they used to show new cast members at Disney. And it just really cool get you a look at what it's like to train back in the 70s. Uh, they were part of traditions. And so, uh, yeah, feel free. Go ahead, drop it in the chat. And if I see the flag and it says it's not posting it because it's uh, a link, I'll click on the link there and uh, let it show. Uh, but, yeah, that's those are really, really neat. So I, I did like it when I got to see those. Um, Frisco Trains, how old do you have to be to work on the train at Silver Dollar City? I believe it's 18. Um, and I'll let you know, Frisco, there's a lot of people that try for it. Um, it is very hard to get a ride, to get a job on the train at Silver Dollar City. Uh, because there is so much demand, so many people who want that job. Uh, and a, a lot of uh, rail fans that... There's a lot of guys that really want to work on the train just because it's a train. And that's kind of the wrong reason to work on it. It's good to love the train um, very much, but it, they oftentimes will get so caught up in it's a train that they forget it's a job to take care of the people. Uh, and that's a danger. You've got to be a, you've got to learn how to be a good spieler. You've got to learn how to talk to the people on the train, to narrate, to perform in the robbery. Not everybody can do that. And we've had people that we had to wash out because um, they get up there and go, all right, everybody, this is a stick up. Or they would get so scared in front of people. It's like, this is a shoot. And so you couldn't, couldn't do that. 
Um, so be be careful. Make sure it's actually a job you can do. I find a lot of people who want to work on the train actually would be better off working somewhere else and learning uh, how to work in the theme park and deal with the public first. So just just a, a comment that doesn't mean it fits you and doesn't fit you. Um, but we ran into some interesting people that wanted to work on the train and we're just kind of like, um, especially with an incident that, you know, like the one that just recently happened. Uh, we've had people that have been mad that they couldn't even get an interview on the train. And then when you have something like that, it's like, you know, there's no way that person could handle it. Uh, and the, the people who were working on the train were amazing, amazing with everything that happened. But that's something that goes above and beyond normal. And you've got to be ready for something like that. So um, let's see. Any news in the Play Pavilion at Epcot? It's canceled. Done. It's gone. Uh, it is on the long list of things that have been canceled. And there was actually an official, um, I think the information about it getting updated has been removed. And Disney has kind of unofficially said that it's officially canceled. So it has gone the same way as the Spaceship Earth redo, as Journey into Imagination redo, as the uh, Mary Poppins edition, uh, and, and so on. <laughs> so, yep, it, it's not happening. So, sorry. Uh, let's see. Is working for Wildfire Time Travel a hard job? Um, it depends upon how you define hard. <laughs> it is a lot of repetitious physical stuff. Going through, checking the restraints, pulling on the restraints. A lot of walking. Uh, you have to be conscious, though. You can't get into robot mode. Because if you don't check a restraint, and that one restraint is the one that opens. Uh, you've got to be very conscious about it. It's long hours in all the weather. This is true of any theme park job. Long hours, uh, barely over minimum wage, uh, weather of all types, uh, and you're going to have to deal with it. Even wildfire and time traveler, their stations are mostly enclosed. You still have the air coming through and the wind and everything else. Um, it, there's a lot of safety stuff that is involved that you have to be aware of and on top of. Um, so they're fun. I loved working at the parks. But um, even though it's a low paying job, don't think it's necessarily easy. They can they can be long, hard hours a lot of times. But I loved it, <laughs> absolutely loved it. So um, heard a rumor that that Sir Willow guy was great as a train robber. I, yeah, well, I, I like to think I did decent. Um, so here's actually a fun thing, completely random. I just found out yesterday, the job I'm doing here in Branson, um, and I mentioned, kind of hinted at it before, I don't want to necessarily say, but I did find out that we just hired a new guy who's also another former train robber. Um, so yeah, we're going to have two of us robbers together again. And then uh, one of the guys I worked with, uh, got along great with, is actually teaching at my wife's school. So um, I am working on getting together with him. I'd love to do a collab with him because, oh, my goodness, this guy can tell a story that puts me to shame. So uh, I'm hoping to be able to get together with him, and maybe I can try and drag him onto the channel. I'd love to be able to do it. We will see. So uh, let's see. And Colton just mentioned this. Do I have any updates? No. And even if I did, I couldn't give it because it hasn't come from the park. Uh, no idea. Wait for the state report. It will come out when it comes out, whenever that is. And we don't know when that will be. Uh, any information will come from the state first and then be released from the park. And I'm not going to add on or speculate uh, until that happens. So uh, it would not be appropriate or my place for it. And it just not. And and I like to keep my good, good relationship with the park. So if it was something that they wouldn't want me to release, it, unless it need to. Now, after the report is released and we hear what happens, then I will probably produce a video commenting about it and, and talking about uh, what I think, but um, I, I'm not gonna do anything until then, so. Whew, my mouth is getting dry. Lots of talking, so. <laughs> what else do y'all wanna see? I, I've got lots of stuff, I got some more time. I still need to, I do still need to film my uh, Park Tales video for this week. <laughs> uh, so what do you want me to do a video on uh, for Park Tales? Uh, let me know because I basically once I shut down here, 
I got set up and I got to record my video because I work the next two days. So if I don't get it recorded tonight, it's not going to happen. So uh, let me know. Ah, black cherry soda is good. Um, how long do I think Fire in the Hole will be in operation? Uh, they will run it this next year. This next year will be the last year. I honestly, I have a feeling that you may see them start a publicity campaign this next year uh, for it being the last one. So, uh, do I think the derailment will be added to the spiel? No. Uh, will they add it? No. Um, I think they may very well actually rethink that part of it a little bit because it's going to kind of hit a little close to home. I would not be surprised if they reevaluate it a little bit. Uh, figment pins. Do, 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 do. Okay, so I got figment pins in two different places. Uh, this is my main place with them. Those are all figment pins. Um, let me hold them up. Maybe I can get the light to work. So these are the loose figment pins here. And there we go. We get some. Trying to get that. Hey, that's a little bit better. Uh, so I've got the emotions. This is a series that is not done yet. Oh, come on, light. Uh, all my country pins. I'm trying to angle it, see if the light will work. Yeah, because that just wants to reflect. Hey, ah, I almost had it. There we go. And then the mini moods, a figment, and things like that. Yeah, I'm sorry that light's not working better. I'm disappointed. I tried to get that to work. And then I have a couple figments here. So let's see. There we go. That's almost showing up. This is a pretty common figment pin. Uh, this is a little bit more rare. And then I've got a lot of cast... Oh, this is actually one that's kind of hard to get. So there we go. Mickey's a Glendale. I do have several cast member only figments that are not in here. So let's see here. Cast figments. Do, 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 do. Safety. Holidays. Let's see if we can pull these up. Okay, so this is one that I absolutely love. And it is, okay, so you saw me talk about the Guest Fanatic cards. That is actually Figment holding a Guest Fanatic card, as well as my Earning My Ears pin. So those are two of my favorite cast pins right there. And trying to get that so it will reflect and let you see them decently. And it just doesn't want to do it there, almost. Get you a little bit better view of them. So... Um, and I got a couple others scattered in. I've got festival pins and uh, ones like that that are actually kept with the festivals. Um, oh my goodness. So let me come back. Let's see. Do I have any... Uh, who framed Roger Rabbit? I don't, unfortunately. That's one thing I don't have. Um, it, cause thank you so much, Mr. Harland. I appreciate it. Um... My dad wants to know if you've ever been to the Great Western Forum Arena before. Uh, you mean where the Lakers play? Yes, I actually have been to two Lakers games there. I, it's been a long time. Um, and I don't think I have any programs for it. But I have been there. Um, I'm trying to remember what else. There was something else I went to there. And I don't remember what it was. That happened. But thank you so much for the amazing gift. I appreciate it. Um, let me see if I can find that, those other figment pins. I have to relabel a couple of these because they ran out of room. Uh, let's see. Okay, so here's a couple that I just got. It's the Journey to Imagination Anniversary. Let's see if we can adjust the light. Come on. Work. And yeah, the, the plastic is making it kind of hard. One of the things I do with the pins... So, this is actually picture pages I bought. One of the things I do is I actually push 
the backs through the back that helps hold them in place so that way they don't fall out of the sleeves and there we go that's a little bit a little better so you can kind of see those um, the other thing that they do with big men a lot is the festivals I uh, like the festival of the arts and food and wine they will have pigment pins for those and so i have some of those scattered around and kind of have them in various places uh your collection is huge it is currently sitting at 897 pins i believe so um and uh these are pins that capture the figment of your imagination <laughs> so um but yeah, uh, I'm trying to remember what else I've been to, been to the forum, but I have been there like a couple of times. So I lived in Southern California, uh, and, and yes, the forum was before they built Staples. Yep, we lived in Southern California from, see if I can get my years right. It was 98 to 2004. Uh, so yes, I did go see a couple things at uh, the forum before the Staples Center. So, yep, yeah, it was quite a while ago. Have I met any Disney actors? Um, generally, when I would run into people at Disney who were famous, uh, we did not talk to them or make any big deal about it. So I did run into them. Um, I just missed, for example, Miley Cyrus's entourage down in the Utilidors when she was doing Hannah Montana. Uh, I, again, kind of crossed paths with Julie Andrews and a couple others but generally speaking if we saw an actor they were either filming something or they were kind of scooting around backstage and you didn't you didn't do anything if you came up and you said hi or something you could get in trouble uh so we just let them enjoy their day besides the one thing that that was really interesting is when i lived in southern california and even norcal a little bit where I lived in Southern California was a beach that they loved to come to to get away from Hollywood. So uh, a lot of Hollywood people live in Thousand Oaks, which is up on the hill, or in Malibu. And so there's constantly people looking for them there. They would come up north to Oxnard, which is where I lived, to use our beaches because nobody would bother them. So we saw Hollywood stars all the time. And you just like, you know what? They're enjoying their day. I'm not going to mess it up for them. So you learn to kind of you treat celebrities like anybody else and uh they appreciate it so so we didn't we didn't do that uh can you get autographs from the characters at silver dollar city yes uh if you run into uh mandy who plays uh whoopsie daisy or uh oh goodness all his different characters uh terry sanders they are very happy to do autographs and pictures and stuff uh so yes anytime you see somebody wandering around as a character so would say they're very happy to do autographs and photos and things like that uh and a lot of times they'll even be doing photo opportunities and stuff so uh my last day in photo last day in photo pass worked with figment yay i you know it's funny i didn't ever get to take pictures with figment um uh, as a photographer we did get pictures of our kids with figment and they got his autograph in the old days i i can't wait to see what they do with the new costume it should be really kind of cool so i i'm actually i'm looking forward to them bringing him back uh would have liked the updated ride but hey <laughs> uh let's see here have i ever talked about the movie the kids were in yes i did actually at one point um <laughs> it was a c-grade movie but uh if you ever look up um ace ventura jr it was a direct -to video movie uh starring a kid as ace ventura's son who gets lost uh my kids are actually in the background scenes of a lot of that i was i was actually at one point they chopped me out but uh but if you do ever want to see a really cheesy goofy kids movie uh it's not a great movie but my kids are in several scenes in it uh you can see them walking the halls and my son looking totally lost at one point it's really fun so uh, oh, this is a good question. What's the difference between a conductor and an engineer? Okay, conductor's not the controls. The engineer has authority. So the engineer runs the engine. Okay, he is the mechanic. He is the guy who drives and steers it. He is responsible for making the train go. 
the conductor is responsible for the cargo. And in the case of passenger trains, the cargo is the passengers. So engineer, mechanic makes it go, conductor takes care of cargo. That's uh, that's it. its simplest form. Uh, there is definitely more to it than that. The conductor uh, on the public railroads also make sure that the lines are clear and they've got their clearances and other stuff like that. But that's basically the simplest way to put it. So um, let's see. Hope when he was driving the Land Rover Bush Gardens, he didn't run into anybody. Not anybody. I hit a rock. Um, I hit a van that was hiding behind me. It wouldn't back up. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I do. You know, I should probably. Those were old videos. Um, I almost wonder if I should update those videos. Because, I mean, I told those stories like in my first year. And that's been a long time. Maybe I should redo those. That would be interesting. So, uh, does Universal Studios have more characters than Disney? No. No, I think Disney's got more. Uh, Disney has a lot of characters they don't bring out. Universal keeps a lot of theirs out, so. But. My 10 worst coasters list is a few years old at this point. So I'm curious, are there any really bad coasters you've been on since then that would have made the list? You know, I don't really think so. I... I can't think of any I have been on recently that would be so bad I'd put it on there. Um, I mean, I've had I've had a few coasters that were one and dones. Uh, Tigers at Bush Gardens. Okay, I got my ride. I don't ever need to ride it again. But I still wouldn't call it one of the worst I have ever been on. Uh, it it was it was okay. It was tolerable, but you know, no thanks. Um, I think my 10 worst is still probably pretty consistent. I don't think it's changed a whole lot. Um, oh, Land Rover, don't yell at Mike. Okay, so funny story. I found this out when we were at Bush Gardens on the Rhino Rally, or on the Feed the Rhino Tour. I had the name of the Rhino wrong <laughs> all these years. Uh, age says a funny thing, and after all the years of not working there, uh, the Rhino's name was actually Tim, not Mike. Uh, I was talking to one of the keepers at the Feed the Rhino thing, and asking him about, you know, the rhino, did he remember this? And he said, oh, yeah, Tim, we remember Tim. Had the name wrong. Correct it. So I did actually correct it in the Bush Gardens video. But, yeah, sorry, Mike, you don't have anything in common with the rhino anymore. <laughs> so, yeah, that was kind of funny. <laughs> Brendan, I got a rock. Okay. So I don't know if I've ever told this story on the channel. My wife isn't here, so I can get away with this. Years ago, my son's birthday is November, so they start doing Christmas stuff and everything. Years ago, we were on a really tight budget. Uh, we were living in the apartment. We really didn't have anything, but she wanted to get him something for his birthday. So she actually went to the store, and she found these cellophane pre-wrapped candy gifts. Like, this is great. Um, so here's a pre-wrapped birthday present that's perfect for him. And so she brought that home. His birthday morning, he's opening his few little gifts. There wasn't a whole lot because we didn't have much. And he gets this, and my wife is so excited about this because it's really pretty. And he starts opening up all the cellophane and gets down and he starts looking and he looks real confused because it's a big round ball of cement. What she thought was a candy wrap was actually one of the weighted balloon anchors. And so, my son's birthday, right after Halloween, I got a rock. <laughs> she was not happy. We all laughed. My son thought it was hysterical. He still has the rock by his bed. Oh, he still has he still has his rock by his bed. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so, yes, my son really did for his birthday. He got a rock. <laughs> but, um... Have I ever thought about working at Magic Springs? Nope. Way too long a drive. I actually, I love what I'm doing right now. Uh, my career is not theme parks. I know that sounds crazy doing a theme park channel, but uh, no, I have my time working at theme parks, so I'm good. Uh, it's four hours to Magic Springs. Nope. Uh, let's see, if I have a green screen, it would be funny to do a video of when you were on the a Silver Dollar City train. I have actually thought about re- Maybe that's what I'll do. I've got to do a video for Tuesday. 
Maybe I'll try and redo that. I could do that. I have to think about that. I, I may, I may try to put that together. Because I think I could do that. Okay, the brain's working now. Because the green screen is over here. I totally could do that. That might work. So, um, you would have think thought the store clerks would have said something. They didn't know what she was buying it for. She's just putting it on the conveyor belt. <laughs> yeah, no idea. Um, yes, we we still get a good laugh about that every year. So, hey Joseph, happy birthday! You got a rock. We didn't get him a rock at the zoo, did we? Uh, no, I I got him a. It was a little loaf shaped penguin. So yeah, we got him a penguin. We typically, every couple years or something, we will get something that we will call a rock, just to remember it. And my wife now laughs, but it, it wasn't until recently. She'd still get mad every time we talked about it. We, we also got him a cool necklace thingy. Yep. Yeah, we got a necklace. Um, and I gave him a bunch of stuff at the now, apartment. I did point out a bunch of rocks, because you know how they have all the little uh, gemstones and stuff you could buy? I said, hey, look, you can get a rock for your birthday. But I, I did, when I gave him the packet of the robots from Laputa Castle in the Sky, there was a couple of them standing on rocks. Okay, so there you go. So he did get, he did get his birthday rock. So, um, can you do a video what you really want to say to dumb guest questions? Uh, I think I've incorporated a lot of those. Some of them are real things I've answered. Some of them are things that I wish I could answer. But... <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I've done a lot of that. So, am I a Christmas music after Thanksgiving or does it start after Halloween? We normally we don't decorate for Christmas until after Thanksgiving. Typically, it's the Wednesday after or the Friday, Saturday and Sunday after Thanksgiving. Uh, however, new house we we've been very excited. So we actually we got our Christmas lights put up on the outside. Uh, some of them I still have to do the doors and the windows, but we've got a lot of our lights up outside. We are putting Christmas stuff up, but even so, uh, Christmas carols after Thanksgiving. I love Christmas music, but nope, I don't want it in November. I want it after Thanksgiving. Uh, but yeah, uh, we are decorating early, so. Uh, yeah, it's, it's come along. We're still trying to figure out, uh, we were talking about the Christmas tree earlier and stuff like that. So this year, Christmas decorations early, but... But I'm not doing We Wish You a Merry Christmas yet. So Craig will be happy. No no singing Christmas carols. So uh, The current fire in the hole, is it a three-story or two-story ride? Three. Uh, it, depending upon how you count it, it's it's basically three. Yep. So I uh, have no idea what the next one will be. No idea. Do we use a real tree or a plastic one? Uh, we don't use either. <laughs> we do have an artificial tree, but it is not plastic. Uh, so, uh, but no, we, we went artificial years ago. Uh, it is a pre-wired one with the lights already in it so much easier. So, uh, no, very, very, very much went artificial. So, uh, what is the dumbest way that a guest mistakenly called a ride's name? Like I've gotten Rise of the Cinnamon. Rise of the Cinnamon. <laughs> Um, oh goodness. Uh, I've heard Space Madden called Space Race. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, trying to remember. Uh, I've, I've seen people confuse Peter Pan Snow White, so Peter Pan Scary Ride, which was like, what? Um, I'm trying to remember some of the others. Tower of Doom. Um... I, I can't remember some of the others. Uh, roller Coaster Rocker. <laughs> what? Um, or the, the Aerosmith Ride. Uh, yeah. So lots of stuff like that. Uh, I can't remember what the dumbest way, because you get so many of them, it just kind of, yep, okay. Um, especially when you couldn't figure out what they were talking about. It's like, what? <laughs> so... Uh, my mom. Thanks, mom. Allergic to real trees. A little bit. Depends upon the tree. Pines I can usually get away with. We, we do put pine fresheners up, so it smells like a real one. Um, but yeah, a lot of the trees that they sell for Christmas trees, um, I am allergic to, so I'll break out in a rash. That's real fun. 
<laughs> did I hear about the lamppost falling of studios? No, I did not. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> so, do I like a white tree or traditional? It's traditional. It's green. It looks like a real tree. So, uh, Peter Pan is not scary. There is, um, at Walt Disney World, right by Peter Pan, there used to be another ride called uh, Snow White Scary Adventure. Um, actually, I think it was across the way. And they had taken the name for Peter Pan and Snow White, and they had mixed them together. Uh, if you go to Disneyland, they still have the Snow White Scary Adventure there. But uh, that's all it was. They just took the two names and mixed it together. So, um, yeah. Real trees seem like too much of a hassle. Fire hazards is what I'm worried about. All the, the pine needles falling and the mess. And, and then, yes, definite fire hazard. Yeah, I don't like that. So, imagine if American Plunge got called Capitalism Fall. Nice. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you you get all sorts of goofy stuff. Um, this is a great example. Remember somebody mistaking Woody Woodpecker as Roadrunner from Looney Tunes at Universal. Say, hey, look, it's Meep Meep. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Meep Meep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the small boat ride. Oh, goodness. Okay, so Small World, Jungle Cruise, and Pirates. People would get those three mixed up and blended together, and you'd hear weird names. Uh, the small, the little horror boat ride. Um, the ride with all the kids singing. Um, the, <laughs> oh, goodness. The scary boat adventure. Um, the jungle boat, uh, the the uh, pirates in the jungle. <laughs> you would hear weird stuff, just absolutely weird stuff. Um, so hi Ping, have I already discussed updates of the derailment? So I'll hit this again uh, because I have, but I haven't. Uh, there will not be any updates until the state releases its report, until the news says anything at all about what happens. I don't have any inside knowledge uh, other than experience, and I'm not going to speculate, and I don't want to say anything until they actually have a real report and other stuff. There has been no other information released, and until the state releases their investigation findings and the park releases a statement, I don't have anything to add to it. So uh, once those do happen, then I will talk about it and comment and give uh, my views, but otherwise there really isn't anything I can say that would really I don't want to speculate I don't want to give wrong information and that's basically what I would be doing at this point so well I hope y'all I've got almost two hours I'm tired it's been busy I still got to film the park tales and I may try to do that the train spiel that could be fun um so i'll see if i can get that put together that that might be a fun little deal to do for park tales and hey this is kind of what because i did the rhino rally reconstructed so that might be fun to uh do the train spiel around the ride i won't do the robbery because um i'll just put a link into a robbery or something like that but um yeah that could be fun so um am i excited for epic universe uh i'm kind of waiting to see on it it looks like it'll be cool i don't know when i'm gonna get to go so uh we'll kind of wait to see that um we'll see yeah look at some maleficent with the evil queen i i did definitely see that mix up a lot uh yeah people not not knowing they're evil witches so, or fairies because maleficent isn't a witch she's a fairy a lot of people don't know that but but i hope it's okay with you all this has been fun i have really enjoyed it i hope you have um got to show you a little bit more of the collection and stuff um but yeah the energy levels and i still got to get that video filmed so i'm going to get ready to say good night thank you all so much for the chat and the conversation for the gifts uh, i really do appreciate that i appreciate you all watching uh, honestly it has been a lot of fun and a lot of this stuff i've got here has come from people like you watching and viewing and mailing it in and sharing it and uh it has been an amazing blessing so thank you so much for all that uh please if you're catching this a little bit later 
or you're hanging around chat, don't forget to drop some comments below too. If you've got ideas for videos, let me know. Um, I'm always looking for ideas and stuff and love to hear from you. And if there's something I didn't get to show you that you want to see, share that too. Let me know. Thank you so much, everybody, for being a part of tonight. I appreciate it. It has been fun. Hope you all have a great weekend and uh, don't get too cold out in the snow. So have a great night.